Hello and welcome to Sharing the Light here at the Sunshine Cathedral in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Today I'm again joined by the senior pastor of the Sunshine Cathedral, Reverend Dr. Darrell Watkins and also Reverend Michael Diaz. Our focus for today's topic is looking at why does God allow evil? Why does God allow evil? So let's just dive right into it and begin our discussion. Uh, senior pastor, why does God allow evil? I wonder how we imagine God could stop it. Well, <laughs> you know, what could God do about it? You know what I mean? Um, that uh, if we if we have choices, then if you know we have free will, then that means we have the you know we're all free to do whatever, uh, including things that are not great. <laughs> you know that's, you know so I I just wonder how we could have how how God would stop it. You know uh, so that's one question is how would God uh, stop uh, evil without. Um, without basically reducing us to puppets. If even that's how God could work. I mean, I'm not sure that God could even reduce us to puppets, but even if God could, God would have to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, because otherwise, if we have free will, then we get to make the choice to do things that we judge to be evil. Um, so, And a lot of what we consider evil is just because we don't like it. So <clears throat> uh, what, what, uh, there's always, for every person who says this is an evil thing, there's someone else thinking, well, that's perfectly okay, or doesn't care about it one way or the other. So, um, so I'm just not sure that what God could do to, uh, to uh, stop evil. So I think the more important question is, why do we allow evil? Mm -hmm. You know, um, of course, the, the quintessential uh, image of evil uh, since the mid-20th century is always Hitler and the, and the uh, um, extermination of, uh, of Jews and, and, and Catholics and Jehovah's Witnesses and gays and communists and all the people that, that uh, the Third Reich uh, killed and, and the empire uh, spreading. Um, and he was he he's the symbol of evil, you know, in the in the 20th century and beyond. And uh, the question is, you know, well, how could God have allowed that? And we forget that Germany was a democracy, so people allowed it. Mm -hmm. In fact, people chose it in, in some ways. Uh, and we always also think that if we have the right talismans, uh, the right uh, the right uh, symbols. symbols and things, that that sort of thing could ever. If we just have uh, the Ten Commandments in schools and courtrooms, and if we have God's name on our money, and if we keep it in the pledge, even though we put it in the pledge, you know, pretty late. Not to mention the the country wasn't born with the pledge anyway. But that if we just drop God's name enough and and throw Bible things around and wear the right symbols, well, that'll ward off all evil, uh, uh, as if we're living in a, 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 another time anyway. And we forget that Germany was uh, the most Christian nation in in Europe. It was it has a very historic. It's historically very Christian. Um, the, the, the Holy Roman Empire, uh, the Protestant Reformation. Uh, some of the uh, most famous uh, Protestant ethicists, Bible scholars, and theologians of the 19th and 20th century, all out of Germany. So it was a very Christian nation. It was a democracy, and at the time it was the most educated nation in Europe. And so uh, it isn't that these things can be warded off if you just have, if you use the right words or belong to the right things or use the right symbols, uh, and it isn't that God can prevent it. These were people who believed in God who allowed it who actually participated in all of that. So I think even asking the question, how can God do it, is a way for us not to take responsibility for our culpability and why evil seems to exist in the world. Hmm. All right. Well, I think that there's another side of the, the whole evil as well. Um, when you say evil, people think of people like Hitler um, uh, and certain other bad names in history. But also you think of just general suffering in the world. When a toddler goes out in the street and gets hit by a car, people consider that evil and say, why does this happen? Why does God allow this? And I think we really have to take a step back and say, well, it, do you, don't you think if God could do something, God would stop that? In the same way, uh, the parent, if you could have done something, you would have stopped it. Mm -hmm. And so I think we have to get rid of this notion that somehow God is going to come in and just save the day. God is this theistic entity <laughs> up in the sky. With the marionettes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just get rid of that mentality and really take a step back and say, you know what, God is trying to persuade people. And the God in us is trying to persuade us to really stop evil, to stop suffering in the world. And if we think of God as all-powerful, think of God within us as being all-powerful. And so we actually have to really stand up and, and take that stand to really stop evil and suffering in the world. And so get rid of that old mentality of God as you know, pushing buttons and, and doing what God will in the world. And really, let's take responsibility for what we can do. And God is a persuasive presence. That's process theology. Is what that God is, rather than rather than being outside of us pushing the buttons. God is this persuasive presence within us. That's that's actually a, a gift of process theology that uh, 
that, that's come to us. I also wonder, um, uh, the very question about good and evil, that, that, that is a duality that uh, I'm not entirely comfortable with. We, um, you know, we, we, we have enough trouble struggling with images of the Trinity, but the truth is, for a lot of Christians, uh, they don't have a trinity, they have a quadernity. Uh, and that is not only the three, the, the, the three aspects of the good deity, but then they also have this bad deity, and this personification of evil that really seems to be almost equal in power uh, and influence as the good one. And so, uh, so we, we seem to be very fragmented in our thinking. Now, we'll then turn around and say that we believe that God is omnipresent. But omnipresent means everywhere. And, you know, this can't be where this is. You know, no matter how close they get, this doesn't occupy the same space as this. So if God is everywhere, where is the room for evil? Mm -hmm. You know, if God is really omnipresent, then where is evil? If, if God is where, is, everything that is, is in God. We see that in the book of Acts. It's in God that we live and move and have our being. Two things can't occupy the same place at the same time. Where is evil? What is evil? So I'm wondering if, if what we're considering evil isn't really the result of our ignorance, our choices, our mistakes, which means that it isn't ultimately real. It's an experience. The experience of it is real. But in of, of itself, it isn't real because there's no room for it. It's not in God. If, if we're in God, do you think evil is in God? You know, and if God is omnipresent, where would evil exist? You know what I mean? So I think that a lot of our understanding of evil comes from our our understanding of duality, that we really, really, really believe we're separate from God. We, we say we believe in the omnipresence of God, but we don't. So a, a lot of what we have to do is figure, is either stop lying, stop saying we believe God is omnipresent, <laughs> or act as if we believe what we say, mm -hmm. in which case uh, then the illusion of evil starts to uh, disappear, I think. Mm -hmm. Even uh, Augustine said that evil is not a substance, but it's a, a direction. A decision away from the, the, the will of God or, or the direction of God, the thought of God. And of course, you quoted Charles Phil, Fillmore as saying, you know, evil is a result of ignorance. Mm -hmm. And so evil is really a, a, a fragmentation of our mind and a thought more than anything else. Um, I believe Lewis Hay says that, you know, e every thought can be changed, and that's part of the positive thinking attitude. It's, it's just a thought, and we can change our thoughts about evil and, and ascribe to good in our lives. The book of Job talks about... Uh, about Job experiencing a lot of evil in his life. And, and the whole story is wonderful because it shows people trying to figure out where the evil came from right. and why it is. Right. And, and the point of the story by the end is that's the wrong question. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the point about Job isn't where the evil came from. The point is he never condemned himself. His friends condemned him. His wife condemned him. They're blaming God. They're blaming him. I mean, everyone's, there's all this blame and trying to figure out going on. But Job never blamed himself. And he never gave up hope. Mm -hmm. And at the end, he survived all of the experience of evil. The, the, the evil couldn't last. Uh, so he survived it. But he survived it by, not, by, not, by, by believing in himself and by not giving up hope. So where, where, where evil comes from, why it's allowed, those are secondary questions. Uh, the real question is, how can I believe in myself and sustain hope so that when evil is experienced, it doesn't last and I outlast it? Exactly. Well, we want to thank you for joining us today here on Sharing the Light. And as a reminder, if you haven't got your copy of The Latest Spirit and Truth, please do so. Uh, you can write to me at robert at sunshinecathedral.org, and we'll get a copy to you. Or you can also visit our website at www.sunshinecathedral.org, and we'll get a copy to you. Thank you so much for joining us.